To create amazing hairstyles on Bender 3.5, you can now use these pre-made geometry node setups which save a ton of time and are much easier to use. After watching this video, you will know a workflow to create any hairstyle from scratch, whether that's for realistic, stylized, or video game characters. And for everyone that is asking for hair simulations, the first version of node-based simulations are planned to be added in Bender 3.6. To start, create a separate hair scalp mesh. I like to just duplicate the head geometry, but creating a new mesh works too. To avoid any major issues, make sure that the scalp mesh isn't super dense and has a UV map. If you can't see a UV map in the object properties, make sure to UV unwrap your model. Also make sure that this symbol is off with the scalp mesh to hide it in the final render. Now make sure that the scalp mesh is selected and add an empty hair object. This will allow you to switch from object mode to scope mode and with the add brush you can add your first hair curves. If you want to add a longer hair you can change the length in the curve shape menu. Also depending on your hair length you might need a different point count. I usually use 4 for short, 8 for medium and 6 16 for long hair. In this system, every hairstyle consists of two types of curves, guide or parent curves and children curves. Guide curves are the ones that you use to style the hair. You can add, remove and adjust those in the hair scope mode. Children curves copy the shape of the parent curves and are used to fill the hairstyle. To add those, you can use the new geometry nodes modifiers. Just open a new window and switch to the asset browser. The duplicate hair curve modifier duplicates every curve guide in a radius around it. So when you move the guide curve, the children will follow. The interpolate hair curve Curves modifier on the other hand adds children evenly over the whole surface which then copy the shape of the curves they are the closest to. Which means that they don't follow a single guide curve but combine the shapes of multiple that are closest to them to determine their own shape. The hairstyling process is made up of three steps. To create our hairstyle we first need to define its shape with guide curves to then afterwards fill it with interpolated hair. And to make sure that the interpolation works well the guides need to be evenly distributed over the whole scalp. So imagine removing 99% of all all your hairstyles here and the remaining ones are your guide curves. For this I would always recommend to use references from all angles to avoid frustration. I've linked my reference for myself in the description if you want to practice and compare your version to mine. Also if you actually do that make sure to add me on Instagram or Twitter, I'm curious to see your results. I like to start with the most obvious ones, adding one, shaping it, adding the next one until the whole scalp is filled. You can use the comb brush to brush the curves in the right direction and the grow and shrink brush to adjust their length. Also to make sure that they don't go through the surface, you can enable surface collision with this button right here. If you want to understand what all the brushes do, I'll link my hair guide at the end of this video where I go in depth into all of them. Right now you don't really need any of these. To make sure that you're not affecting finished curves, select the mask brush, switch to the curve mode and brush over the curve you're currently working on. Once you're done, you can just press A and the mask is gone. To be even quicker, you can press A to make sure all curves are selected, then press Ctrl I to unselect all of them, and the next curve you're adding will be the only one selected. Also don't worry about the blockiness of the curves right now, we'll fix that soon. And once you've filled the whole hairstyle with guides, you can select the interpolate hair curves modifier and drag it onto the curves. This new modifier will appear in the modifier tab, where you then need to select the scalp mesh for it to add children to the surface. And now to fill your beautiful head of hair, just increase the density. You might notice that these interpolated hair children extend past the hairline. To fix that, select your scalp mesh, create a new vertex group and call it density. If you now switch to weight painting, you can use the paintbrush with a weight of 1 and paint in red where the children are supposed to be spawned. And once you've filled the whole hairstyle with red, to apply the vertex group, select your hairstyle and switch the density mask input with this button to a text box. Tapping your vertex group into that text box will apply the vertex group. An alternative to the vertex group is the mask texture. Once you've created a texture on your scalp, you can switch to texture painting and paint a density mask that way. Just make sure to save your texture once you're done. There are a few more settings that you can play around with, but the only one that I want to highlight right now is the part by mesh islands tick box. If you have parting in your hairstyle, you need to split your scalp mesh at the parting edge. The easiest way to do that is by selecting the edges you want to split in edit mode and then press Alt M and select faces by edges. Just make sure that the mesh islands are completely split from each other. You can check that by hovering over one of them and pressing L. If only one of them gets selected, you've done it correctly and enabling the tick box should create a nice parting edge. Now let's give this hairstyle some character.
First, switch to the Render Properties tab and open the Curves menu. Under Viewport Display, select Strip instead of Strand and increase the additional subdivisions. If it starts to lag later, you can always change it. Select the Set Hair Curve Profile from the Asset Browser and drag it onto your hairstyle. If you now switch to the Modifier tab, you can change the Hair Curve Radius to make it look more realistic. Also make sure that Replace Radius is enabled. Next, apply the Clump Hair Curves modifier. In the Settings, disable Existing Guide Map and change the Guide Distance until you have a bunch of big clumps. If you encounter something like this, or the strand switch over to the other side, here's how you can fix that. Duplicate the hairstyle and remove the left from one and the right from the other hair object. Now also duplicate the density vertex group and split it into a left and a right group. And after updating the density mask in the interpolation modifier, the clump should work as intended. Now apply another clump modifier and disable existing guide map again. Copy the guide distance from the first clump modifier, paste it onto the second one and divide it by four. Afterwards, copy that new value and also paste it into the clamp offset and you have a pretty decent looking hairstyle. To make it look even better, you could play around with the other values and modifiers we haven't touched yet or go into the actual geometry node setups to customize it to your liking. The trim hair curve modifier, for example, can vary the hair length by a tiny bit, which can add to the realism and the shrink wrap hair modifier can lift strands that are clipping into the surface back out. These new modifiers definitely make the hairstyling process a lot easier, but there are still quite a few settings or functionalities that are missing, that in my opinion are pretty crucial to create a great looking hairstyle. Which is why I made a collection of my own hair modifiers. Some of them I've created myself, and some of them are repackaged from the Blender hairstyle demo file. Just download the blend file in the description, drag it onto your project file, and append the node groups you need. Here's the quick summary. For these hair strands that float above the actual body, you can use the fly away hair modifier. The amount determines how many of all the hair stones are being displaced by this modifier. With the strength value, you can adjust the intensity and the noise scale and noise scale along curve settings help you fine tune the result. Sometimes you might see that the roots of your hair strands are clipping into the surface. With the push roots above surface modifier, you can fix that. The strength determines the intensity and with the root length, you can include more or less of the whole hair length. If you have parting in your hairstyle, the parting edge can look pretty bald. With the filled parting edge modifier, you can pull more curves to the parting edge to fix that. Just add a new vertex group, go into edit mode and select the parting edge. Now assign those selected edges to the vertex group, switch back to object mode and type the vertex group into the text box. Proximity to edge affects the radius around the edge that strands are being pulled from and the strength pulls them more or less close to the edge. It also duplicates the curves on the edge, which you can fine tune with the extra hair amount and extra hair radius values. Sometimes you only want to modify a percentage of all the hair strands. With the select random curves modifier, you can determine the percentage of curves that are supposed to be modified and the seed can change which curves are being randomly selected. Now when you select the modifier in the modifier tab and open up a geometry nodes window, you can add all the modifications you want in between these two points. For a simple hair material, first append the set material and basic hair shader node groups and apply the set material modifier to your hairstyle. Then just create a new material, select it in the material input of the modifier and add the basic hair shader group to your material. Plug one of the group outputs into your material output depending on which render engine you're using. And then you can adjust the colors, darken the roots and add slight color variations. If your hairstyle has more than one color, you can use the multicolored hair group. There's no color input here because you need to go into the node group. In here, you can create a new image texture. The resolution can stay pretty low. Afterwards, hide the hair object, select the surface mesh and switch to the texture paint mode. In the brush settings, set the mode to single image and select your newly created texture. And now whatever color you paint on the surface will also be applied to the hair strands that grow out of that part of the surface. And once you're done, make sure to save the texture and unhide your hairstyle. And for everyone that wants to create stylized hair, the convert to stylized hair modifier is for you. Now you just need to select a profile curve and to adjust the size, you can change the scale. And last but not least, to turn your geo node setups into real geometry, you can use my convert to mesh modifier. First, add a new mesh to your scene and move it aside. Now just apply the modifier and select the geonode mesh you want to convert. And now to convert it, just hover over the modifier and hit Ctrl A. This doesn't work with empty hair curves though. But if you don't want to deal with geometry nodes at all, I can highly recommend the Medusa 
notes add-on. Everything I showed you in this video and more is possible in this neat little interface that this add-on is adding, which means that you never have to touch geometry notes if you don't want to. And the modifiers, in my opinion, are more intuitive and convenient to use. The only downside is that it isn't optimized for Blender 3.5 yet, so it's quite laggy. I've been using it in Blender 3.3 and there it runs pretty smoothly. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Also, a lot of people have been asking if you can create hair for video games with geometry notes. Yes, you can create hairstyles based on hair cards. The only downside is that you can't control the twist of each hair card, which can be annoying sometimes. A big shout out goes to Joey Colina for this one. He basically created the note setup for this. I just put it all together in the end. The workflow is also a bit different to the one I showed in this video, but if you don't mind that, here's how you do it. I bend the convert curves to hair cards, add texture to converted hair cards, and add texture to geo node hair cards node groups from my blend file. Now create a new empty hair object and add a few hair curves. And afterwards, add the convert curves to hair cards modifier to your hairstyle. First, use the card width value to make the cards as wide as you want. The card resolution determines how dense the cards will be once it's been converted to a mesh, and the twist strength adds a random rotation to every curve to avoid issues of see-through hair. Then, add the set material modifier, create a new material, and select it in the modifier. In the shader editor, add the add texture to geonode hair cards group, and plug the outputs into the fitting principal BSDF inputs. Now open the node group and add your hair card texture to the image texture nodes. The normal texture isn't necessary if you don't have one. To see the texture, make sure to use Eevee and switch to rendered view. Then scroll all the way down to your shader settings and change the blend mode from opaque to whatever you think looks best. The texture will most likely not fit perfectly, so you can use the mapping node in the shader group to position it correctly. And with all that set up, you can create your hairstyle. Once you've finished your hairstyle, it is time to convert it. First, select your hairstyle, go into object properties, and under viewport, enable wireframe. Now you can see how dense your hair cards currently are, and you can adjust them with the card resolution value. Next, add a new mesh to your scene and move it aside. Append and apply my custom convert to mesh modifier to this new object, Select your hairstyle in the object selection, and while hovering over the modifier, hit Ctrl A. Now your hair cards are actual exportable geometry. But the textures won't work outside of Blender. To fix that, check the attributes of this new object and look for UV. Select it, hit the downwards arrow and convert attribute. Use the settings, generic, face corner and 2D vector and hit OK. And to check if the textures work now, you're going to replace the add texture to geonode hair cards node with the add texture to converted hair cards node. If the textures show up when you open them in the image texture nodes, you now have fully functional hair cards. Soon you'll be able to do anything and everything when it comes to hair with geometry nodes. And if you want to get an even deeper understanding of the tools and become a hair anatomy expert, make sure to watch this video where I answer all the questions you might still have after watching this video. Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.